Hello there, Quicksilver Slash, and today we have a video from Cheeky Shenanigans in the Tier 7 Japanese battleship, the Nagato. And when you take a look at the matchmaking, this is pretty much the best you can expect. A few other Tier 7s, a number of Tier 6s, and some 5s, and there's a couple British battleships, one on each team. So, kind of keep an eye out for them if I can see them, just to see, I mean, the Nelsons. It's a beautiful ship, look at that silhouette from over here. But this isn't about the British battleships, it's about a Japanese one. And it's been around for a long time. And she's always been good. The Nagato was one of the tier 7 battleships. Uh, it's the one I liked more when I got there. When the options were the Colorado or the Nagato, to me the Nagato was the better option. Now you've got things like the Scharnhorst and the Gneisenau, and there's going to be the Nelson, and the numbers are increasing, but the Nagato is still a very good ship, and in the right hands, very capable of doing some big damage. Now while there may be new ships, this is not a new map, and the strategy I don't think has really changed all that much. It, you know, you've got Destroyer Alley over in Charlie, uh, Mitsuki's going in there, a couple cruisers will probably join. You've got Alpha, where a lot of the bigger ships tend to go wide and duke it out, and then Bravo at the middle of the map doesn't normally see a lot of action early on. But from the looks of it, a few more ships are going to Charlie, a couple of the battleships seem to be heading over that way, but there does appear to be a good force going to A, that Minsk leading the charge into Alpha, finds the enemy Akatsuki, and unfortunately doesn't have a ton of support just yet. The York is there, but you can see the York is already turning out. And, well, one of the downsides of, of most of these tier 7 battleships is they're not exactly fast vessels. The exception being the Germans, but they're their own basket. Uh, the Nagato, the Colorado, they're not fast ships. They take a while to get where they're going, but once they get there, their presence is definitely felt. And, well, looks like the first volley of the match is going to be at the enemy Nelson, or was, until this Nuremberg popped up. And, personally, I would shoot the Nelson side on. It's a good profile, except now it's turning, which definitely hurts your odds. And a bit of a missed early shot. You know, early on, take shots when you get them. By the time you need to engage something, your guns will be reloaded anyways. And there's always the chance at the early Citadel. Cheeky does land a hit though. 5400 damage, can't complain about that. The only thing you can complain about is maybe some of the crew members are jumping aboard. They don't want anything to do with this fight as Cheeky ran aground. And that's definitely something early game need to avoid. Plus side, well angled, and well, got a side on enemy Nagato sailing at very low speed. I think Cheeky did a good job assessing the required lead. And there's the hit, 12,000 damage, all just regular penetrations. That hurts, and that puts Cheeky off to a really good start. Almost 18,000 damage, two volleys in. And you can see that enemy Nagato just... I am not sure what they are thinking. Once you've kind of exposed yourself in a ship, trying to back up into cover isn't something that works. It's a common world of tank strategy and that's why I think you see it. But why that Nagato is trying to back away when sailing forward it could easily have gotten into cover, it's beyond me. But they've lost half their health and Cheeky just keeps dropping shells. Here comes another volley. Hopefully this one misses as Cheeky's engines just switch directions, sailing forward again. And yep, the shells land astern the vessel. And things so far aren't looking very good for Cheeky's team. The enemies are off to a 3-0 lead. They've got two of the caps. Hopefully this Nuremberg turns a little further to port and just gives Cheeky a beautiful shot because obligatory exploding Nuremberg. You know, everyone's thinking it. It's the ship that always dies, it seems. 
There goes a chunk of its health. Cheeky fires. They're looking good. Come on, Citadel. There it is. There's the kill. Obligatory exploding Nuremberg. And that brings them one closer, but in the process, they lost a friendly York. So the odds are still kind of stacked against Cheeky and their team. That enemy Nagato, they've run through a health repair. And you can see here, Cheeky's turn into port to get the guns on and keep them on. And it might run them aground again. Fortunately, there's no one else to really shoot at Cheeky, so it's not a big deal. There's hard cover off to the side there. And the only ship that can really shoot back is that Nagato, and it's not doing much. But, then again, neither is Cheeky's team. They're down 5-1. to one. The points are approaching that point where two quick kills and this game's over before it even began. And yet, Cheeky's got a kill and almost 60,000 damage. Like, it's a decent start. You know, just crossing the 6.5 minute mark. You'd be happy to have that in a higher tier, that kind of damage. So, it's kind of odd that... The team's doing this poorly, but part of the reason Cheeky is getting the damage is ships are giving good shots and Cheeky's aim has been true. The Nelson pretty much side on, those shells are going straight in, at least they looked like they were, only 2500 damage, most of them bouncing or over penetrating it seems. And that definitely hurts. You've got a battleship giving you a broadside at that kind of range, you want the big damage. Now fortunately that Koenig and friendly Nelson seem to be doing a good job dealing with the T-22, though the Koenig is going to have to ground itself to deal with it. And you can see that enemy Nelson rudder over, it's trying to get out there, and just look at that profile. I cannot get over how good these ships are. Like these British ships look, at least to me. Everyone's got their like kind of own like criteria for what makes a good looking battleship or just warship in general. To me the Nelson is a good looking one but she's missing a few of her hit points after that volley. Just over 12,000. Another big hit and Cheek is in a pretty decent spot right now if you look around. A huge part of the enemy team is up here to the north of this island. And sure, they're focusing down the Konigsberg, but they can't get shots on Cheeky. And really the only thing that can is this Nelson, but they've got their guns pointed at the Leander, at least for now. And while things haven't exactly improved points wise, at least they haven't worsened. And, you know, one or two quick kills here perhaps by Cheeky and his team and they're kind of inching back in it. They're down 6-3, you know, if they get two quick kills here that pretty much ties it up as far as ships go. Then you're just having to deal with the fact that the enemy team's got the points. But watching that Koenig, it's heading in towards Charlie. So if it can deal with that Fubuki hot on its tail and get into a cap, that could be a huge swing and nothing is firing at Cheeky right now and that's just a big advantage you know when you're playing ships you love to be able to just sit there and basically take free shots at things you can see that battleship accelerating quickly Cheeky adjusting their aim these shells are looking good again come on there's the big hit three citadels almost 30,000 damage and there goes the Nelson bringing things just a little bit closer. Downside, once again, it seems like every time Cheeky's team manages to get a kill, the enemy team does as well. The Koenig is charging in, it's on low health, it's got a Leander in front of it, Fubuki behind it. Things are not looking good. Some torpedoes cross the bow, good call there to go astern as You've got a chunk of land, a destroyer up there, you know the torpedoes are going to be coming down that gap. That's exactly what was anticipated. Put the ship in a reverse, got out of the way, dodged the torps, and really now can sail out and 
can start dealing with some pretty attractive targets. An Algerie, Furitaka, those are two cruisers that are going to be very easy to get some big damage on, almost regardless of how well angled they are. You can see that enemy Ganice now sitting side on, and that's just too juicy a target. You know, it, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's sitting side on to you, you're going to be shooting at it. The only caveat I might say is shooting that Algerie here might be the better call simply because it removes one more ship. It brings you one step closer to uh, getting back in this points wise. There's a good hit. The front turrets are almost reloaded. That should spell the end of the game for that French captain. You can see her turning. She's trying to do something and as you can guess Probably torpedoes in the water. Torpedo cruiser, turn broadside on at the last second. And, like any good self-aware captain, engines are in, restern, in, in reverse, or astern, and Cheeky is getting out of there, making sure not to sail forward into the torps, and keeping this little chunk of land between that ship and themselves until the torpedoes go by. Now you know it's safe to go out and continue pursuing targets. You definitely have a bit of a tough decision here. Do you chase the Gneiss now? Do you go for your counterpart on the enemy team in their Nagato and Furitaka? And I think if you've got a shot on this Nagato, you definitely take it. You try to finish them off. And with the friendly Nelson finishing that enemy Ganesi off, things become a little easier to decide. And you can see, step by step, the teams have gotten closer. Both Cheeky and this Nelson, they're on three kills apiece, and they've been doing a lot of lifting for their team. And uh, The only other ship on their team with kills is dead. And look at that, the Furitaka was about to turn broadside on, sadly, Without any vision, there's no chance to take advantage of that opportunity. Now I'd say one of the other big important things that occurred is the friendly Nelson did sail through Bravo, captured it, and that has been slowly dragging the points back even. The Furitaka is once again spotted, side on, this is a shot that needs to kill. Guns are loaded, the shells are out, fly true, and they just don't. Two over penetrations, definitely not what you needed. And you can see that Minsk just getting away. Losing that would be pretty painful. When you've only got a couple ships left, losing anything really hurts you, even if it's a destroyer on next to no health. And that's simply because it's one other ship the enemy team has to be continuously accounting for. Next volley out, and once again, a little under lead, falling through the stern for an overpenetration. Now, personally, I'd keep going for the Furitaka. Anytime it's spotted, that's what I'd be trying to finish because it's a dangerous ship. But it's easy to kill if you can hit a shot into its citadel. The Nagato is not firing back. It is on low health though, so it could be worth trying to finish her off. And really, the only thing you have to be aware of is this Furitaka is definitely in the cap, and there is this opening of water, which means there could be torpedoes on the way. She gets spotted on the other side of the smoke, and you can see her racing. She's going to be in cover before you get a chance to fire here. And this is a very dangerous situation. So the Fear Talk is always going to be able to fire torpedoes back around this point. You're never going to have the opportunity to lead far enough to get a shot. And you can pretty much guarantee at this point, with her turning like that, she probably launched some torps. And there's probably going to be a second set in the water right after that first set as she comes about 180. Now the Nelson chasing down that channel is putting pressure on and forcing the Furitaka to give cheeky shenanigans their side and 
it really sucks to be in a cruiser in a situation like this because there's no good option. There's no, here's how you best angle. You just weave and hope things can't hit you. There's the second set of torpedoes. Cheeky is gonna slip past and that pretty much guarantees safety. But there is the enemy Nagato and that is a pretty good shot that she has on Cheeky. The rudder's still hard over and this is where those big battleship guns always hurt. You can see the front ones struggling to keep up with that rate of turn and the rear ones were just way too far away. We're down to four minutes left in this game. Time is definitely starting to tick away. And here comes a shot and a kill. And that is huge. Not having to fire the rear guns right away means you've got them ready for this Firataka. So as it's around the point of land, Cheeky's gonna get the rudder over, help get those rear turrets onto target. But it's not going to be needed as the Nelson's playing a bit of a anything you can do, I can do better or as well. In that they're four kills apiece. These two battleships definitely putting their team on their backs. They're not giving up the ghost. And with just one enemy ship remaining and just cheeky remaining, there is a Kraken on the line. Now it is a very good call by Cheeky here to stay in this cap and try to get it. You really can't afford the enemy team to run away with the points here. I don't know off the top of my head if the math works out that the enemy team could cap if Cheeky leaves the circle here, but it's best to be careful just staying at those couple extra seconds, get it, and by keeping it you pretty much guarantee the enemies aren't going to win on points unless the timer runs out and this one is really gonna come down to the line tier 6 American battleship versus a tier 7 Japanese but the New Mexico is very dangerous and you can see with the New Mexico sitting bow on Cheeky opted for HE I think that's a good call gets a fire with the first volley forces a damage control and I guess you can do that when you're facing off against one battleship. It takes so long for the next volley. You don't really expect a fire, but battleships have some pretty high fire chances, as illustrated by that second volley. Another fire, and this is really going to even the odds. That New Mexico had more health going into this engagement. I mean, Cheeky's got the repair, which when it's up, is really going to bring them pretty close to the same amount but with the New Mexico burning she's now kind of the underdog and I can just imagine how tense this was getting for Cheeky really all that New Mexico needs to do here is turn to port get on the other side of that little chunk of land in the middle of the cap play ring around the rosy till the timer runs out but they made a mistake turning back to the right there to try to get those front guns on and go for a shot. And I can only imagine what the enemy team is saying in chat. They've got to win. Like it's just, you got to hold on. And you can see the hit points ticking away. The fire is out. Cheeky lines up all the guns and swaps to HE. This is really a last ditch moment because with the reload you're not getting another shot they're just under 6,000 health and who knows 25 seconds left the guns are almost loaded it's all or nothing here whole game coming down to one volley the grouping looks good they hit hard, leaves them on 60 health, and the fire fin finishes him. And the post-battle screen is pretty much exactly what you expect. 412,000 credits, 8,300 experience, devastating strike, dreadnought, 
Kraken Unleashed, high caliber, 169,000 damage, just shy of that 170 mark. Five kills, three fires, four citadels, that poor obligatory exploding Nuremberg. If there's one in a game, it just has to explode. It's the rule. Defended the cap 15 times and captured one all alone. And, you know, that Nelson it did a great job too. Four kills, but cheeky shenanigans gets the carry in this one. Five kills, really did the work, and basically kind of just sat in a very similar place on the map the whole game, just one target at a time, focusing them down, killing them. And when you can put yourself in a situation like that, where only one ship can see you, you stand a really good chance of having results like this, as long as you're not going to the corner of the map to do so. And the team battle score makes perfect sense here. Cheeky on top, then Nelson there in second. And you know not much else to say those five kills really carrying the team as for the damage done you can see some pretty big chunks to enemy nelson and nagato the new mexico as well and that poor nuremberg what did it do to deserve that <laughs> simply existed as for the like damage received potential damage received it's also kind of what you'd expect some pretty high numbers there 1.8 million it looks like and that's what the nagato can do it can sail through a lot of damage deflect a lot repair through some of it and the guns are just accurate and hit things hard enough to finish them off as for money and experience walks away with 352,000 credits 8300 experience sadly can't see the breakdown but don't really need to it was a well-played game i enjoyed watching it it was fun to kind of see how that one unfolded because right off the bat the enemy team definitely had the advantage and it just slowly went away kind of towards the end like they held it for a good chunk of the game anyways thank you very much cheeky shenanigans for sending this one in I enjoyed it. I hope everyone else did. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to the channel. And as always, I'm Quicksilver Slash, and I'll have another one for you all later.